The following presentation is brought to you through the paid memberships of NotaryStars.com, the only notary training platform and resource library with over 150 hours of training on every loan product under the sun. Together with our sister website, OnlineNotariesPublic.com, which focuses on notaries who are pioneering in remote online notary, we strive to give you a safe place to ask questions, get answers, gain confidence in your notary career, and achieve success without overfabricating the truths about our industry. If you would like to support us, please consider liking this video, subscribing to our channel, sharing this video with a colleague, or becoming a member and trusting us to help you achieve the level of success you desire. Hey everybody, all you notary notaries and signing agents from across the United States, thanks so much for being here tonight. Um, welcome to MGM, also known as Monday General Mentorship, brought to you every Monday except for holidays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which reminds me, Notary Stars will be closed for live classes and mentorship next Monday in observance of Easter weekend or Easter Monday. But don't worry, our phone support for members will still be open. Today is Monday, March 25th, 2024. My name is Beth Hattard, and I'm joined by my co-host, William Bumphrey, and Mr. Ronnie Mithel. We're all here to help you excel in your notary business. We can bring you up to snuff in notary certificates, specific documents, every type of loan signing, and remote online notary, client relationships, or marketing. So help us make this magic tonight happen. Please fire up those cameras. We wanna see all of your beautiful faces. And if you have questions or want to share something with your fellow notaries, no sweat. Just raise your virtual hand using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. Or if you prefer to keep your hands on the keyboard, you can use a keyboard combination, Alt plus Y for a PC or Option plus Y if you're on a Mac. Um, one final quick favor, please follow us on your favorite social media platform. Links will be posted in the chat and available on the replay. We dish out tons of awesome info and bite-sized training nuggets you don't wanna miss. Mr. Ronnie Mickle, are you ready to kick us off today? I am. I just want to remind everybody to please turn on those cameras tonight. It's so much easier to uh, do a session like this when we can see your faces and see people to uh, interact with. Um, uh, as Beth said, next week will be closed. However, I want to ask you to please mark your calendar for April 15th. We have something very, very special coming for you guys. And I think all of you are going to want to be here Uh if you've ever received a call asking if you can do translation services, which is something very, very popular for notaries to do, we have partnered with a company that is a translation company that is very Notary Star uh, minded like. Uh, they reached out to us. They had been using Notary Stars to find notaries to do remote online notarizations for them. When a document gets officially translated and it has to go in for Apostille, it has to be done through remote online notary. And if you're not a remote online notary, that's okay. Um, you can still add this affiliate link to your website. You can also promote it as a notary and you will get a nice commission off of sending customers their way. A lot of people look at notary websites for translation services. Um, this is a partnership that I'm really, really excited about that I want you guys to be a part of. So if you can make a note tonight for April 15th, go ahead and put it in your calendar. That is one general mentorship that you will not want to miss especially because it involves you making money. <clears throat> Excuse me. The company is absolutely amazing. They've been so wonderful. For Arizona notaries, and specific, if you are on Blue Notary, you will be able to notarize these, and we will have specific uh, runners down to the Secretary of State's office. They're going to be filling out the apostilles for the ones that need to be apostilled, and Arizona notaries in the central Phoenix area we'll be able to make a really great fee for running documents down to the Secretary of State's office. Um, so just letting you know for that, um, the, re the remote online notary portion is for Arizona notaries, but the referring the business out for the translations, you guys can all make a commission on it. So 
mark your calendar for April 15th. Um, the next thing that I want to just announce before we go into questions, and we have a lot of great ones, if you brought a question for tonight and you didn't put it in on the uh, the job form, please go ahead and raise your hand uh, because we have a lot to go through. So we want to get you into queue and we like to mix you in. We don't want you to get left behind tonight. There are no dumb questions. So if you have questions or something sparks your mind, go ahead and raise your hand virtually to get into queue. The last thing that I want to mention is the newsletter that went out this week um, is announcing my SEO seminar, which I'll post in the chat throughout tonight. I'm not going to post it right now because I need somebody to be talking so I can grab it. Um, if you've not taken my SEO seminar uh, and you own a website, you will never get this information anywhere else for less cost. Right now until April 1st, there is a 50% off uh, sale for if you sign up by April 1st, the price is only going to go up. I will not drop the price. Last year, I sold it at $199, and my marketing students will tell you I definitely know what I'm talking about on getting on the first page of Google. If you think Googling your name or your business is how people find you, that's not how they find you. I will teach that to you. And for my marketing students, I have already pre-filmed a step-by-step -step on SEO, which they haven't even received yet. I'll be releasing it the day of this seminar but it's gonna be a spreadsheet-like version that says you need to address this topic. This is exactly how you do it. And it's gonna be a takeaway for everybody that attends the seminar. Of course, my marketing students are grandfathered into getting that because they already have that information. So they'll they'll have that auto automatically. Uh, but if you have a website and you don't feel like it's really working for you or you think, oh, I can't beat Google my business, you're wrong. My marketing students will definitely tell you that you can. I can put my money where my mouth is on that. Um, so get signed up and I'll post the link a little bit later. Last thing, guys, I'm going to post this in. We have several, uh, several support for advocacy groups going on throughout the country. And if you have one, please email us at contact at notarystars.com. I just posted those in the chat. Even more important than my SEO seminar is supporting notaries in other states. Uh, I love, I think it's Maryland that says, what if you hadn't had a raise in 30 years? You don't have to be a notary of that state to sign their petition. And just imagine if you were looking for a raise and you needed somebody to advocate for you. We are a nationwide group of notaries. Please sign those petitions. If you have a petition in your state, please let us know about it. And we're going to be doing this on every general mentorship so we can let all the notaries know about the petitions going on. Um, other than that, Ms. Beth, I am ready to start uh, with the questions because I want to make sure that we get to the bulk of them tonight. So it looks like the first one we have sent in on jot forms might be for you, Mr. Ronnie. Okay. This says, as a new notary, I've received only a handful of notary opportunities from signing services. I currently do not have a website. Would it be wise to focus on boosting my online presence or transition into in-person marketing and why? So absolutely. Well, here's the thing. I can't say absolutely until I say this. If you are looking to advertise to the general public and to attorneys and everyone outside of title and escrow, you absolutely have to have a working website for you. Okay. There's just no if, ands, or buts about that. If you just want to pick up orders, I know that there are plenty of retirees that watch us that they don't want to do the website. They don't want to go out. They just want to take what they get from signing services that's fine. If you're looking to make the big bucks, you are going to need a website. You're going to need to work on it. You're going to need to make sure you groom it. And you're going to also trans, uh, need to transition to in-person marketing. If that's not your cup of tea, you don't need that. It really depends on your goals and your ambitions. And every single person on this call has a different goal or ambition. And I'm not going to be the person, even though I can help you get there, if you have the biggest dreams, I'm not going to make everyone else feel like they have to do that when they don't. It really depends on what you want out of it. So if you want a lot, definitely. You need a website that works and you need to know how to do direct marketing, which I cover in my marketing course. I did plug that because the question was right up my head. <laughs> well, I like that answer. You're, you're not pigeonholing every single notary out there into the... Um, got to make six figures kind of mentality. It's wherever you're at in your life stage and your career, 
whatever you need to do, marketing can make it happen for you. Perfect. All righty. Let me see here. We've got another one for you, Mr. Ronnie. And guys, get your hands up if you have any questions. Get, in, get into Q now. Um, it says, I used to be a white glove notary. However, I stopped taking jobs for about a year because my husband was very ill. I'm a member again, but I'm not getting any jobs. Anything you can suggest? So I don't know if this question is actually for uh, for Unlimited Inc. specifically or Notary Stars because it says a white glove notary. There are several companies that have white glove status out there, and I don't recognize the last name. Um, but I will tell you that, you know, at Unlimited Inc., even if you're a white glove notary, uh, if you stop taking orders, we are going to bump you down the list. Number one, if you're off Notary Stars, if we don't see that training, your training's valid for six months to a year after you have downgraded. So it'll keep you afloat for a while, but we're constantly keeping things up to date and things are constantly changing. If you're a white glove status uh, with unlimited ink notary and you weren't taking orders, you probably want to make sure you redo your training. If it's been about a year, that would put you at the mark of it downgrading you. And then if you've been out of the circle for a while, you probably want to re uh, go through our onboarding again. Um, so that would be my answer to that. But it, it's going to be different for every company. So maybe just definitely updating and uh, credentials and education and getting back in the game. Absolutely. Right? And if you are a white glove notary with Unlimited Ink Notary, you know that Travis and I are very approachable. So you can always reach out to us if you're on that status level, because we definitely work with those notaries the most. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to take the next question, but you have a question in the chat. It wants you to post the link to your marketing uh, class. So if you do that while I answer this question. Thank you. Um, it says, and it's from the same uh, person who wrote in, this is part two to their question. Is it worth the money to go to NNA convention in Orlando this year? I live in Florida, so I can drive. However, the classes are very expensive. So I'm going to say in general, it's a perfect opportunity to network with other notaries. So if that's your goal, uh, I would do everything I could to go there, particularly since you can drive. Um, the other half is if you have been a notary, for a very long time, I'm not so sure you would learn anything new, um, but you could. I mean, we always kind of want to be able to stay in the education game just in case something new pops up that we didn't know. So I don't know if you can afford at least a couple of those classes during that NNA conference. I'd at least drive over, take a couple just for the networking opportunity and maybe some of those classes that could benefit you to get your um, your get back on your feet and get back into the game. Ronnie, do you have an opinion about that? Yes, we're talking about somebody that's been out of the industry for a while coming back in. My take is if you've been in the industry for a year, year and a half, just remember that conferences are designed to sell you things. They have to recover their costs of ballrooms, transportation, getting their employees there. Um, it's It's a sales job. So you're going into a sales operation when you go to a conference. So if you've been out of it for a while, um, maybe that's an option for you. If you're brand new to the industry, great option. If you've been here for a year and a half or more, you can get so much free education online in a community like Notary Stars and others. Um, you you might want to save your marketing dollars for your business if you're in it a year and a half or more. Yeah. Ready. We've got some hands up, Mr. Mickle. Nancy Fauché, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Hi, it's not really a question, but just something I wanted to share that happened this week that was very exciting for me. Cool, go. So I did a closing several months back for a title company um, through a signing service, and she sent me an email this week, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it says we quite often have closings in Ocala 
and would love for you to be my standard go-to person for that. And I occasionally have the need for remote online notary and would love to use you for that also. And wow. I did my first one for her today. Whoa, congratulations. Yay. So that's very exciting. I'm like, yay, another one. And so she's a notary star, so that's what happens. That's it. <laughs> How did they find you, Nancy? I did a closing for her several months ago through a signing service. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Very love, exciting. Love, love, love. All righty. Got another one with a hand up. Um, Brenda, Brenda Gatson, another Floridian. Do you want to unmute and ask your question? Hi, um, Beth, I have a question about one of your training cards that I was watching on certificates. You okay. said only the hybrid certificate could only be used if allowed in your state. Yeah. And when I look at all the certificates that are in my state, the only thing I find under an, an, an acknowledgement is the specification of forms in section 117.0513 Florida statute does not preclude the use of other forms. Does that mean hybrids are allowed for that one acknowledgement? Because that's the only place I see that in um, the handbook. I can't answer that. You're asking me oh. to interpret law. <laughs> doesn't here's the problem with hybrid certificates for most of our states it's not going to be a term that's used in your handbook so we can't go directly to our handbook and find the reference to a hybrid so it usually takes making a call to your secretary of state or whoever your governing body is and asking that question and you may have to define for them what you mean by hybrid because that's a creation of the real estate and lending industry. It's not a notarial creation. So um, I think, Nancy, tell me whether you've, re you've uh, researched this for Florida. Can Florida do hybrids? Can you unmute? There we go. Okay. Um, I... I I don't have an exact answer because I've been trying to find out too. And good luck getting this anybody from the Secretary of State to answer your call or call you back ever. Yeah, it it'll be it'll be a process for sure. Um, but whatever, whenever anybody in Florida gets that specific answer, get it in writing and share it with the rest of your Florida notaries because again, it's a tough road to hoe. Sometimes for states that put out uh, FAQs on the website or um, newsletters like California does, sometimes that kind of information will be contained there because it's definitely not going to be in your handbook. I think I can count three states that reference a uh, hybrid certificate and one of them calls it a dual certificate. So terminology is an issue there for you guys. So Sorry, I can't be of more help to you, Brenda. Well, that's all right. Does it ever happen in general notary work or is this specifically just loan signing? It could happen in general notary work, particularly. I'll give you a, a for instance, Arizona Secretary of State says we absolutely can't do a hybrid certificate. Yet on the probate side, we have durable, only the durable powers of attorney that can use a hybrid certificate. So, and those durable powers of attorney is what you run into a lot in general notary work. So, yeah, it right. could span both. All right, thank you. You bet. Ms. Beth, do you mind if I put my two cents in on that? Um, well, you can put in three cents if you have it. It might be worth, <laughs> it might be worth three to five. So, <laughs> one thing that you want to make sure is if you obtain information that you obtain it from your secretary of state you get it into writing like Beth said and that goes for everything that you ever have to do it, it doesn't matter if it's hybrid certificates or not anything that you go outside of your notary handbook that you get in writing so you have something to protect yourself uh, but also there are so many notaries out there that will go take a thread and pull at it 
because they heard what they wanted to hear. And then they will go and regurgitate that for the nationwide or state level notaries and we'll get everyone on the wrong track. And we've seen that a lot in Arizona. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting your information from a reputable source. And even if they give it to you, double check them. We are the kings and queens of saying double check everything because you don't want to rely on someone else's research. Even if you trust that person, you need to know it for yourself. And so I just wanted to throw that in on there because so many of us rely on others and that's okay, but we've got to rely on ourselves as notaries. Yeah, great advice. Miss Bill, I think the next question is actually for Bill. Uh, Bill, are you ready to tee up and, and, and kick this one out of the golf park? I think so. All right. <laughs> This one says, I'm just getting started with Ron, and I want to know how to choose the best platform. They all seem so expensive, and I've never seen any Ron orders come out in my area on signing order or snap docs. Uh, or will that change once I update my commission? Is it really worth it to become a Ron notary? All right. Um, there is a lot to unpack there. <laughs> There's a lot of different questions all kind of thrown into one uh, area. So the first thing I would suggest is if you come to our Friday class, we can kind of go give you a lot more detail in smaller bites because it'll it'll be a little much to unpack there. But um, first thing I would look at is if you're just doing signing order or snap stocks, if you're just going to go after the business that's being supplied by a signing service, then you really need to find out what they're going to want because they're usually going to dictate if you're going to use something uh, like a service link or a signing order that, uh, you know, a, a, a signing agency that says this has to be on notarize or this has to be on, uh, well, proof now, I guess. Um, so that's the first thing. Th that being said, it's absolutely worth becoming a raw notary, but it means that you don't just go after signing services. You have to go out and get your own business because the signing services are behind on that. Uh, not, not, not all of them, but signing services and escrow in general tends to lag behind on this remote notary uh, portion of it. You're going to find a lot more business in the areas that aren't being touched. And because it's so new, it's still the wild, wild west. I mean, any area that you can think of that's not escrow hasn't been touched by most remote notaries. You've got the medical field, you've got the legal field, you've got all these other fields, fertility clinics have notarizations and things like that. All of these places that you can kind of pick and go after. And the beauty about being a remote online a remote online notary is that you're not tied to your backyard. So if you find out that you really have a thing for the fertility clinics, because there's lots of notarizations that happen via a fertility clinic, let's say, you can go to the ones that are in your state and you can go to the ones in the state next to you and the state next to that and the state next to that. So you don't have to play in your sandbox. You can play in everybody else's sandbox. And so it's uh, it's absolutely worth being a remote notary. Uh, absolutely. Um, now, as far as picking the platforms, that's probably something that we can discuss in a class a little better, just because it's really specific to your state is going to dictate uh, in a lot of instances what you can choose. Uh, you have to look at your business plan. You know, what kind of signings are you going to do? How many notarizations are going to be in each signing? Do you want to pay one upfront fee and not a bunch of extra fees? <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> so I hope I answered that well. You did really well. And uh, the only thing I'd like to add to it is at Notary Stars, we do live allow all members, no matter what your membership level is and, and guests of Notary Stars, when we have these platforms come in and give presentations. Sorry, they heard the wind blow. Um, when we have these RON platforms come in and give presentations, we allow you to come in and see it. Now, all members have access to those re replays with tear sheets comparing each platform to each other. So you don't actually have to attend the class, but you do have to be a member to be able to see those RON platform comparisons. Uh, and that research is already done for you. And we invite them back you know, annually to keep them updated as well. 
Mr. Ronnie, you do have a hand raised. Um, Alexandria, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I, I've i been a notary for years, um, but just like locally, like around my neighborhood, notarizing paperwork. Um, I'm just getting into these new venues. I've been learning about the RON, the loan signing. I'm just going to, my my initials to do it just part time because I do have a full time job. Um, I wanted to know, is it beneficial to open an LLC if I decide to go and do this part time? I just Beth, wanted to get some intake. Miss Beth, thank you. Do you mind if I if I answer on that one? Take it away. So you don't actually need an LLC, even if you're full time. And I'm sorry, but when people tell you that they are, uh, they're trying to sell you setting up your LLC, or they didn't know better. You can operate as a sole proprietor in most states if your state requires you to open an LLC. If you are a single member LLC member, you don't get any of the protections of an LLC. I am a single member LLC owner at the moment, although you guys hear me talk about Travis being my partner. He's been grooming for two years and we we signed that partnership soon. And then we're moving from an LLC to another business entity. Mm -hmm. you, a lot of people want you to think that you have to have this. And here's the thing. If you start what sounds like a signing service and you start putting it in signing order and snap docs, they're going to look at you like you might be a signing service. And so there's that. So it can actually deter people from hiring an independent contractor. You... For tax purposes, you know, it doesn't help you any. You don't get any of the legal protections of having an LLC if you're a single member LLC. So if you're a single person out there opening an LLC, it's between you and the IRS and whoever advised you. But I say I would have never opened one knowing what I know now had I, if I was just going to be me and just out in the field, even if I was full time. Ms. Beth, I'd love to hear your take on that as well. Um, totally agree. However, I'm going to tell you for taxation purposes, you need to have a separate bank account. That doesn't mean it has to be in a business name, just a separate bank account. So you're going to run your business even part time like it was a business, a legal business, but you don't really have to have that LLC for sure. So would you advise to open like a bank account and just like build their everything notary? Every, all of the income that you make off of your um, notary business should go mm -hmm. into a separate account for sure. Okay. Your expenses then come out of that account and it's way easier to track and it kind of keeps that red flag from the IRS from popping up and saying, what is she doing here? She's um, filing taxes for income as a 1099 employee, and yet she uh, doesn't have that business structure, doesn't have a separate account. So if you keep everything separate, you'll kind of fly under the radar um, for the IRS and you won't get flagged for an audit quite as easily. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. I love that question because I feel like there's so many new notaries out there that need to hear that. And I'd love to empower all of you notaries that are here tonight. I know that some at some point somebody's going to tap you on the shoulder and say, I'm thinking about doing this and they're going to ask you. Now, if you could go back in time, if you feel like, oh, I went you know, down a road that I shouldn't have had to go down, make sure you let other notaries know. That's one of those things we can pass down to the next generation. Yeah, and there was a comment in the chat from um, from someone that says, if you stay a sole proprietor, your business checking accounts are cheaper. So that's that's a plus. <laughs> Absolutely. Miss Beth, this next question is for you. But before I ask it, um, I want to remind people, if you have questions, I think we're at the peak of viewers tonight at 105 right now. Um, if you brought questions tonight and you need some what help with something in your business, whether it be documents or marketing or um, anything you need to know, we are going through the questions that you pre-wrote in, but your hands mean everything to us. 
I see Jacob raised his hand. We'll get to this question on the job form and then we'll go to, we'll go to Jacob. But guys, get those hands raised. Uh, Ms. Beth, this one is for you. And this comes from VJ. It says, uh, files that which have more than 100 to 200 pages, am I allowed to only pull out the documents that need signing notarization and scan it back to signing services? The reason being, out of the 200 some pages, only 20 pages require signatures and notarization. The rest is all information or part of the pages that require signature, uh, or only part of the pages require signatures. I would still go through each document with the buyers, but wanted to know if only the signed and notarized pages can be scanned back. Well, I would not do that. There's a, a, a couple of reasons. One, sometimes they fund from your scans. So if they don't have all of the pages, then you're going to have to go back and redo your work anyway. And we don't necessarily know that. Sometimes it's just for QC. And if that's the case, then <clears throat> maybe, but it's more work for you, VJ, for me to throw 200 pages in my high-speed scanner and be done with it and send it off is way quicker than pulling out the signature pages and then getting them back in the proper spots before I stack it and send it off to, to FedEx. So I think I would just avoid the guessing game. Why do they want scans? Are they funding from scans? Are they just quality control checking from scans? Uh, don't even guess and don't even put yourself through all of that extra paces. Just get a high-speed scanner, throw it in there. Three minutes later, you're done. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Ms. Beth, I just want to say, you know, the the scanner that we have posted on Notary Stars is something that uh, that we do. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but this came from Roxanne Franks out of Arizona. And this the date on this was March 10th, 2022, when we started promoting this scanner. And I just, I just, yeah, I remember. I want to share this and I've saved this text message. I don't have anything from 2022, but I saved this one. I want to see if you guys can see that. Uh, let's see if we can get it. It's no. going backwards. You'll have to take my word for it, but if you can read backwards, it says, so freaking fast, it blew my hair back. <laughs> <laughs> and I've saved that text message for this entire time because I think it's so funny. Um, you know, as 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 technology's gotten better, these scanners have gotten, I still have one right here and one for the mobile when I go out. But I love when she wrote in all caps, so freaking fast, it blew my hair back compared to what she was using before. So don't be afraid to invest in one of those, you know, higher dollar scanners um, to get that fast turnaround time that you're looking for. And then you won't even think about spending all that time. I remember when I got this thing and I used to use the brother uh, printer, which was a lot slower than doing this one. And I have to tell you, I remember looking at that machine and just being like, I will never leave you. You are, <laughs> you are my best friend. We will be in a long-term relationship. I say goodnight to this thing when I leave the office. So, and I'm not kidding you, that thing's in a machine. Uh, and back when I first started, and Beth, I'm sure you'll agree, we didn't have devices like this. And I think a yeah. lot of us, maybe Beth was included, we still used our brother printers and scanners for a little bit longer after they had come out because we had already had those. And we were kind of part of that generation that said, well, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then when we first tasted it, it was like, I'm never going back. Yeah. You know, would you agree? Like once you get a fast scanner like that, that does a good job, you're like, I'm never going back. The only way we had to scan 20 years ago was with a fax machine, right? Mm -hmm. and scan and fax, or we had an all-in-one printer that had a um, the scanner built into it. Those things are dogged slow. When they came out with, all of these requests to do scan backs, I was freaking out. I'm going, look, it's going to take me two years from Sunday to get these packages scanned on my dog slow all in one printer scanner. When I first bought, and I still have it, I use the brother. I know you guys use Epson, but I use the brother ADS 2700, and it's fast. Epson's faster. And this, <laughs> it just changed my world, really did. I just posted it into the chat and this one we do get affiliate links for. So if you buy one after clicking the link, it means we get a small commission on it, which helps episodes like this come to fruition. 
Um, but somebody had posted in the chat which one are you talking about. We posted in the chat uh, once that we think. <laughs> The Epson 400, I have to say, I once I got to 500, I, I'm never going back. And if they put out a 600, I'm probably never going back from that either. It's like yeah. that's one for me. Once I got one, I could not stop. Um, no offense to Android users. Don't hang up on us. I love it. <laughs> I just happen to be a Mac user. Hey, I'm Android. Come on. I know. And we work together just fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no judgment here. All righty, we got another hand up, Mr. Ronnie. This is Jacob. Jacob's back. Hey, Jacob, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Yes. Hello, everyone. Sorry I've been gone for so long. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Great. Okay. It doesn't have the green indicator. But anyway, um, so recently I did an apostille order today. Um, it's just a, I actually did this RON and then tried to get it apostilled. It was a, certified copy affidavit of something from the FBI about like a background check or whatever. Um, so it, of course took it to the secretary of state's office and they refused to apostille it, even though it was just a certified copy affidavit from the signer saying, this is a certified copy that of this document, which I hold in my hand basically. Um, so I was just wondering like, are they wrong or what should I do? Well, your Secretary of State's office is never going to be wrong. Um, they are not going to let that document go to another country unless all the requirements for that document to be apostilled are true and correct. Um, so whatever reasoning that they gave you is right. I've actually had it happen to me right at the Secretary of State's office where I did something wrong on the notarial certificate. Yes, I make mistakes too, even though I teach people. Um, I can make a mistake too. If there was something wrong with the actual document signature wise or being filled out, you have to return to the signer, um, which means you have to be even more on point with filling out documents when you're doing apostilles. If it's your notarial certificate and you're the one walking it in, you can fix it right then and there. Um, and if you're doing it remote online notarization, unfortunately, the whole process starts again from notarization because you can't just update a RON document. So it's really got to be done right when it's put through RON. But whatever reasoning that they gave you, you have to fix it. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You cannot question your Secretary of State. And I have to tell you, Jacob, I would be, I am not man enough to question them at the desk to, because <laughs> they, they're the ones here in Arizona. I mean, it may be different for Texas, but they are the ones who give me my commission and they are the ones who can take it away. And I am not going to question them. Well, what Jacob is talking about is a copy certification by document custodian, right? So there are some documents that no state notary can copy certify, and those are vital records. That's almost consistent throughout the 50 states. But then there are some other things that will that have to be a certified copy from the institution that holds it and not the person who hands it to you. So that's where that's where it kind of rubs a little bit. They they know if some other state on that apostille is going to accept a copy certification by document custodian or if they need a certified copy from where that document is officially archived. Does that make sense? He's on mute, but I just sent him the request. Um, yes, yes, that does. Uh, um, it's just now that the customer's kind of mad at me, um, which I know that's just going to happen. I just have to deal with that. Um, and they're just like, oh, I, you know, you scammed me and all that. And I, I have no idea how I'm going to say, well, now this has to go to Washington and I don't know how long that's going to take. Yeah, if it's a FBI background check of some sort like that, yeah, you're definitely wouldn't be able to do a copy certification by document custodian. So, um, yeah, well, give them a freebie. You live and you learn, Jacob. These are um, quirks of doing apostilles that you either get trained on in, in advance or you learn as you go. And this might be one of those learn as you go situations. And then I do, I do want to say something to you, Jacob, uh, while you're here. And um, I'm very impressed. And, and if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you on mute because I don't want to misquote it. 
How old are you? I'm 20 years old. I mean, according to my birth certificate. <laughs> 20 years old. And I, I just want to say to everybody, you know, we've done series for uh, notaries of a certain age, which we call primetime notaries. Jacob is pretty much a regular here. He's done work for my company. And one thing that I want to say to you and I want to say to everyone else is this is the this is what we're talking about when we're talking about the next generation of notaries. Someone who's 20 years old and giving it their all. He's been here for at least six months or over trying to get information, trying to make sure that he's doing the right thing. I'm so proud of that because there is a we have a lot more on the other side of the fence notaries that are here trying to make sure they do the right thing because they have age and experience and they understand I have to do things right. You're probably one of the youngest members of Notary Stars that actually takes it this seriously. So I just want to give you a nod and say I'm very proud of you in your youth for taking education so seriously. And I know that we've had personal conversations where you're like, I need to do this right. I got to do this the right way. And you're very focused on the business, but you're fo focused on it in the right aspects of business, not how much money can I make. And you just said, I'll need to deal with that. You are literally light years beyond me at 20 years old. So I just wanted to you know, say that to you. And I want our community to know this is the kind of people we need to rally around. You may feel like, well, I'm older and I'm learning, but I have to tell you, there is a difference between 20, 43 and 63. You get information differently and you take it in. And this is the kind of uh, generation we want to bring along with us. If we train more Jacobs, then our jobs will become easier in a lot of arenas. We're not training our competition. We're helping our community. So I just needed to say that tonight. And thank you for what you bring to the table. Of course. Thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate it. All right, Miss Beth, are we ready for the next question? You are on mute, Miss Beth. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Miss Miranda, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Well, I am I don't know what to say after that. I mean, that I have to come <laughs> after J Jacob now. I'm like, dude, I'm more than twice your age and I'm just starting out. So woohoo. Um <laughs> actually, uh, I just want to say thank you for having this because I um brand new. Well, I've been commissioned for about four years, but never had the opportunity um, to do it. And I just got into this because I'm transitioning out of crazy rat race into a different kind of a rat race, but I like this. Um, I guess with this is that I try to sign up for an order with, uh, I think with, uh, through, through you guys. And I, I failed because somebody got it before me, but you guys had this, so this is why I'm here. But I did have a question as a new signing agent. Um, what is the best way of just getting over that hump and proving yourself that yes, I am worth it. Yes, please accept me. Cause I think at this point I didn't have all the things needed, but I had everything kind of downloaded on the website, but what can I do to, I guess, just get over that hump and get into the groove. So. Miss Beth, I have a lot of advice on this and I'm just sitting on the hands. <laughs> I, I'd love for you to go first, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to help out here. No, you go for it. So never at a loss for words, go for it. <laughs> no, never at a loss for words, especially on this topic, because as a hiring manager in those databases for notaries, we see so much and you have to realize how many people were here before you. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's going to take forever, but it doesn't. It just needs to happen when somebody says, I need a notary yesterday and you're the only one available. This is the week right here, end of month. Mm -hmm. Unlimited Inc. is hiring. I hired somebody that I've never hired before, never had an order before on signing order. It was a notary to pro graduate and a notary star today. I actually, last mm -hmm. night, I, we had a notary assigned to it that had done lots of orders. They wrote us 12 hours in advance and said, hey, I'm going to be sick. I can't do it. It was nine o'clock last night for a nine o'clock signing. They picked up the phone. They were ready to go. They got that order. That first few orders is what you're looking for. You need to see that order number going up. And that means your profile needs to be filled up. You need to put your training in there because what's going to happen is they're going to rely on good old faithful, right? At the beginning. And when you have that moment to shine, take that low ball offer that's 50 miles away and show that company what you can do. And I don't mean just 
unlimited ink. I mean, we put out our orders for a finite amount of money and it goes out to a 25 mile radius. Maybe you don't want to go 25 miles in Seattle. That's like saying, can you go to the end of the earth? <laughs> um, seriously, you know, but in Arizona, what part of Arizona are you in? I'm in Tucson. And I, I did that just today. I got one signing that nobody wanted because it was really, really low. I was like, I don't care. It's three seconds from my house. I don't care if it's six stamps. <laughs> Every signing that you take after you get to like 50 to 100, mm -hmm. they're not looking back. All they're seeing is that order count and no negative reviews. Do every single one that you can do at mm -hmm. the very beginning and then groom your groom your clients. And also, here's the best advice I give my marketing students this too. Take screenshots of every order that comes out before you click accept. Find out what the companies are that are sending out the most orders to you and ask them what they need from you in order to get their orders. Don't say, can I get your business? Call them and say, hey, I've noticed that you put out 23 orders in my area last month. I haven't been selective and that's okay. I want to know what you need from me. Is there a training course you need me to take? Is there something that you need me to do so that I represent you properly? Do you have an onboarding process? How can I become a part of your system? And, I, and you have to work with multiple avenues. That's just signing services. You're going to do the same thing with direct title, but you want to ask them, what do I need to do with you? And go to their website, stalk them out, see what they're looking for. If they don't have it there, then call them and say, you sent out 23 orders last month or 78 orders this quarter. How can I represent you? And that will work. I promise you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I'm sorry. That's the best advice I've heard in a long time, Miranda. Yeah. Thank you. The only thing I'm going to add is mm -hmm. be persistent longevity in this game is what will uh, sustain you. When everybody else is sitting back and hanging up that shingle and saying, hey, I put my sign up, no one's coming in. I mm -hmm. built it and they didn't come, right? Mm -hmm. the, about the time that you want to quit, just stay in the game. I guarantee you, it'll come. It will come. Miss yeah, Beth, I, I, it's the same with remote. It's the same I, thing with remote notary. If you're thinking about getting into it, get into it. Don't sit on it. Because the longer you sit on it, the mm -hmm. longer it gives everyone else an opportunity to, uh, to move in there and take away your part of the business. So mm. now. <laughs> yeah, we have a comment in the chat that I want to address because I, I think this is not the best question for this conversation because we're a positive environment. It says, why do signing agents accept such low fees for so much work. Well, everybody's got to start somewhere. And there are high volume clients out there that don't really care if you've been doing this for 10 years or not. At 10 years, you should have direct clients. You should be able to get those fees and only fill in your calendar with close appointments to your address. If you're looking at the job boards or the signing order or the snap docs and you're saying, well, that's a low ball fee, it's not going to just you. It's going to hundreds of notaries. It's literally going out to every notary in your area. If you're in central Phoenix, that's 600 to 700 notaries within a 20 mile radius. So if you're in a large area and they say $50, you also have to analyze the order. Sometimes Unlimited Inc. puts out orders for $60, $50, and they have eight pages. And notaries want to screenshot it and complain and say, hey, what's, what's this all about? It's eight pages. You have to analyze it and do the math. If it's not your assignment, let it go. But we need to stop talking about lowball fees and so much work. Yes, there are some signing services that want to do $60 and $175, but we forget those places. <laughs> like we just leave them in the dust and we don't bring them along with us at all in the community. I won't name one of them tonight because, you know, let's don't speak of the devil or they're sought to appear. But when you're when we're talking about, you know, other signing agents, some of them have to start somewhere. And that's what they're banking on. Some of these companies is those brand new notaries picking up those fees. And I will be honest, as a signing service, we don't have the highest fees in the country. We bill between 125 and 150. We pay the notaries between 80 and 100. We try to keep it at that so that I can have a staff to answer questions, pay the insurance on your notarizations, offer support. Um, when it comes to that word lowball, we have to do the math. Signing services can't work against notaries. We have to work together. 
Signing services should be filling in your calendar unless you're retired and you're just trying to pick up a few bucks here and there, you know, 80 bucks, 100 bucks or whatever. But that mentality of they're low ballers, don't work with them. You shouldn't have that mentality. I will tell you, I fell back on this in my uh, earlier years. I talk about this story, making 15 to 20 grand a month at Fidelity. I walk in the office. She didn't, she didn't come to me and say, I'm retiring. And thank God I didn't take that attitude of, all those low ball offers, I kept my place filling in the calendar when I wasn't working with Fidelity, with Mortgage Connect, with Coast to Coast, with all of the other companies before Unlimited Inc. was even a thing. So you never want to turn your back on signing services so that you can fill in your calendar, keep a good reputation, keep a good attitude about it. And, you know, I, I learned this from Ann Rice's son, Christopher Rice. He used to tell me all the time, if the train doesn't stop at your station, it's not your train. And so I want to turn that around for the signing services or uh, for the notaries out there with signing services. If it if it if the order doesn't tickle your fancy, it's not your order. You know, we should leave it at that on a positive note. Um, Ms. Beth, are we ready for the next question? Yes, sir. We've got Cookie Daniels got has her hand up. Cookie, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Sure. I just want to, this isn't my question, but I did pick up a job at five o'clock for unlimited ink for $50, um, 17 minutes from my house. It was eight pages, four had initials, two had signatures, no notarizations. And I was done in 10 minutes. So I'll take those all day long. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll, I'll even explain that order. Let's see what that one is. Uh, actually I'm looking it up by cookie. Let me look it up by your name yeah. <laughs> that was for today. Yeah, I did it at, 7 30 eastern time yeah that's a general notary assignment um very very easy that was with our company um i won't name the name on the on the live feed but we do a lot of those all over the country with notaries in there you know we have notaries that how many pages did you say it was miss cookie it was um eight i believe mm -hmm. we'll send them out for 50 and people counter for 200 because they don't read the instructions and then, yeah. and then then we just mark them like don't use them again mm -hmm. uh, because they counter offer and they don't even read the instructions and we tell that it's eight to 13 pages in the instructions mm -hmm. and so you know we're not going to charge signers and there was no notarization on yours nope. they just need the paperwork we're not going to charge signers over because you feel that it needs to be charged over we're going to charge them a great fee and then give a good split between the notary and what we bill. For this particular client, when I open up the order, you made $50 and we billed that client $75. Mm -hmm. That is not a bad split. No, it isn't. I, I loved it. It was a fill-in. I got to do it like at the end of the day and still made it back to be on this call. So it was awesome. And I thank you guys for the work. But my question is, and I thought, I don't know if it's appropriate or not, I have a signing company that's over a hundred days due to pay me. I have been dealing with this company for six weeks, going back and forth. He, they don't want to answer me right away. And I think cause they're buying time and I feel like I've been pretty patient, but when is the time that like, I'd say something mean, like, I'm like, you know, like this isn't fair anymore. In the beginning, I kept asking them, what is your payment terms? What is your payment terms? And they wouldn't answer me. Then they wanted to pay me Zell. And I said, okay, here's my phone number. And three emails later, I still sent them my phone number to do Zell. Then it was, you no, know, you know, I just keep getting crickets. When do I say enough's enough? First of all, let me pause this recording and just for everybody out there, I'm just going to say this real quick. I'm going to resume it. But uh, if you wanted to know the name of this company, you should have came to General Mentorship tonight. So I'm going to pause the recording. So when a company doesn't pay you and it goes past the payment terms, and if they didn't tell you your payment terms, then it truly defaults to your payment terms. So you did the service and i don't think that there's a judge or a small claims court out there do you know where the signing service is located florida florida so you would have to follow small claims but you can file a complaint against them with their attorney general in florida so when okay. you're not if they give you payment terms and they don't pay you within those payment terms or comply with q 
communicating with you? Are they giving you the runaround? Your next step is to report that to the attorney, attorney general's office in Florida. You okay. need also market and notary uh, notary stars for any company that's in there. You have the ability to post one or let us know about one, and we can let other notaries know. We can put them on the blacklist until they do pay you. As a National Notary Association, you know, notary, which we all are because we're all loan signing agents, you can't go to the title company or the party that hired them to, to do that. It's just everyone's, yeah. hey, I already paid that entity. They have to pay you. You can report it to the, uh, the attorney general's office. When you report it, report it to the attorney general's office in that state where they operate, one too many complaints is going to get them in trouble. Okay. They may not be the biggest thing on the radar, but one too many complaints is going to get them in trouble. Okay. I, people talk about a demand letter. Should I do one of those? I just hate, I'm not a mean person and my character is to just let it go. But then I think of other notaries and it's not fair, you know, like I'm not confrontational and I don't know when to say, you're really making me mad now. You know, should I send one more email out and say, Hey, be transparent with me. Let me know what's going on. Like, before I get angry, like <laughs> I, I'm gonna post this in the chat. Um, I have never been a fan of Legal Shield and tried to use them at some point, and it was just horrific. I actually used a new service now called Kate Law Firm, which is all online, and you just plug in what you need to do. They can send a demand letter for you, and their prices are highly compared. Uh, and there's no affiliate link, by the way, guys. I just used it myself. Um, this law firm will send a, a demand letter for you and they'll help even uh, start a court case in that state with you. I actually just used this at Unlimited Inc. Uh, for a notary who posted a review that was completely bogus um, and unmerited and filed a ca court case against them in their city. Cost me $600 max and I'll be there on their court date if you're watching. Um, so... <laughs> It is it's a wonderful service and it's much better and more streamlined than Legal Shield. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Miss Beth, we still have a ton of hands up and we are almost out of time. Um, unfortunately, I, d I don't think we're going to be able to get to everybody tonight. Uh, we, you know, we try to start as, as soon as we can. If you have questions and we don't get to you tonight, Please come back next week or put them in on the job form. I'll actually post that. Miss Beth, you have the GM notes up. Can you post that link to the to enter a question every week? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we'll take one more question for Mr. Butch there. And yes, if your question is, did I get your text message? I did, but it it was a long weekend with the Arizona party bus, Mr. Butch. But uh, I'm going to be getting back to you. But if you have a question outside of that about the spreadsheet, uh, we'd love to hear it. Yes, uh, thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie, I'm not happy I missed that bus. I am not happy. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, <clears throat> in hospitals and uh, in the jails, I've been getting uh, power of attorneys. And in my block, it says, do you swear, affirm, and acknowledge now, I did uh, a block like that. Uh, it was a power of attorney from the bank. And I crossed out, acknowledged, and initialed it. And then I got a call back, and they said, but you did it wrong. We rejected this notary block. But I, you know, even before he took it back to the bank, I told him, you can't, you can't have both. You can't have a... You can't swear in having to acknowledge. So what's going on? Give me a heads up. Well, <clears throat> the Arizona Secretary of State, Butch, says that we are not authorized to do hybrid certificates. Right. Unless they are associated with a durable power of attorney and or a self-proving affidavit on a will for Arizona. Those are the only two documents that we can do a hybrid certificate on. Okay. Well, the client, um, 
said, you know, it would they gave it to me again, same document. And he says, he says, Butch, don't argue with the bank. So, you know, well, I didn't cross anything out. And I told him, you can't do both. Okay, so so they would have had to have cho chosen between the two. And let, but you said it was a power of attorney. Was it a financial power of attorney? Uh, yes, ma'am. They did select uh, financial records, yes. Uh, okay. The financial, so, yeah. So what you need to know is that any power of attorney, even though it doesn't say durable in the title, could be a durable power of attorney. And that's the key factor on that power of attorney. We just did a short little training video and wrote a blog on that. Posted for those of notaries. Did you see that? Miss Beth, I'm, I'm sorry. I got distracted. Re say that again, please. We just did a short little training video and a blog post on that very topic. Um, and we cited um, uh, regulations, your, your proof in the pudding that it's not lawful, right? Or that it is lawful or that you can do it on certain documents. So that's what you need to go back into our website and pull that up and look at that. So the next time you're faced with that, then you can say, here's my state regulations. Here's what it tells me when I can do a hybrid certificate. We've had another notary right here in Arizona that went through a whole process with, and I think it was Chase Bank. I don't know if Kirsten is still here, um, but she actually was armed with information that then went back to the bank's uh, law firm, their uh, in-house attorney firm. And they said, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Okay, we're good. And she was able to have them tell her which certificate they preferred, a draft or an acknowledgement. And she ended up attaching a loose certificate. So you can't, sometimes you can't just tell somebody they're wrong because they're going to push back immediately. In particular, uh, if you're dealing with the bank who's done it this way for years and years and years, right? Now you're going to have to say, here's the regulation that tells me I can't do it unless it has this statement <clears throat> With <clears throat> within the power of attorney that says it's a durable type of power of attorney. If it's a durable financial power of attorney, I'm golden. I can do it. Miss Beth, I just want to ask Mr. Butch a question. Mr. Butch, you said this was for the jail, correct? That's correct. And how did you get that booking for the jail? Uh, they called me from my website. Okay, now everybody, I want to draw your attention to the screen here. If you are on the fence about taking my SEO course on the 17th, take a look at this. It says Phoenix Jail Notary. Okay, I just Googled it. There's Unlimited Inc., there's Notary Stars, which everybody in our community in Arizona do, uh, benefits from. There's my second website. There's my uh, website again with a specific jail we service. There's Butch's uh, um, uh, listing there. That's what he learned to do in my class. Hummingbird Noble, Mobile Notary also learned to do it. We are dominating the first page of Google for those jail signings. And my company, you can hear me brag about doing them all the time. But look what we've done. What is this below here? That is Google My Business. We have pushed down Google My Business to the second page of Google. So if you want to know how to do that, I just posted it into the chat again. I can teach you how to do that. And there are there is no one in this notary community that can teach you how to do that. I promise you that. If you want to show up for hospitals or jails or 
whatever that is you're trying to sell and push down Google My Business. I'm so sick of the people saying, Google My Business, let me charge you $150 just to show you how to set it up. Look what we just did. And I'm charging less than that, really, to show you how to push it down. So join us on the 17th because... Butch, I'm gonna ask you again because I want I want people to hear this. And you're my you're my golden child right here. How old are you, Mr. Butch? I'm 75. I'm so, I'm Do you have any experience in web design or building a website or anything before you took my class. You're on mute there again. We can we love children. You can let them talk. Not a <laughs> not a not a thing, Ronnie. Not until I met you. And I'm still not happy because you're beating me right now. And uh, I got to figure out how to work that. But anyway, I'm happy. Thank you. I, I will tell you, with the day you beat me, Mr. Butch, I am going to, I'm going to get you a gold medal of some sort because you are literally a prime example of anybody could do it. Don't let age, don't let experience, don't let anything get in your way. Butch wants it. And guys, he's already there. And he's just talking about documents that he did, but he's getting that business from his website that he built himself and all he did was watch some videos and implement it for himself and every single person here can do that for themselves uh miss beth i we have gone 11 minutes over but um i think it's time to say good night and i'm going to ask everybody to please turn on your cameras if we didn't get to your question please put them in on the job form you can always email us at contact at notarystars.com uh, or excuse me help at notarystars.com which goes to everybody and we'll make sure to answer them, especially if it's a dire need. But let's turn on those cameras and let's give our signature wave. Wave to yourself if you come back and watch the replay and looking for something. Wave to those future notaries that are going to join us next week or next year. Wave to those who couldn't be here with us tonight. And Miss Beth, you have a special note for us to leave it with tonight. I do. It's going to be a little bit different than what you're used to hearing from me, I just want to leave you with a thought. What you think, you create. What you feel, you attract. And what you imagine, you become. So think what you want to see happen, and it'll be there for you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Have a good evening. Grab that notary next to you and bring them along next Monday. Whoops, not next Monday, the Monday after. Okay. And share, share your path with them.